Well, let me ask you about this because somebody also asked that on your overly expensive membership site that like they were saying that they're an academic. They wonder because I'm an quote unquote, I'm not an academic, but I do still have an affiliation with MIT. I, the word academic is just dirty. It's like, it is. which is a problem that needs to change. Just like the word nerd is dirty. No, academic needs is going to be the next front to open, and they're going to be very vilified. We're coming for them, and it's going to be very, very ugly, and I cannot wait. No, but there needs to be a place, a, a different term for people who love research and knowledge. Oh, and, that's true. and, and that's very true. Like, you have no, to- No, you're right, 100%. You're right. So like, there, you have to- you have to clarify what you mean by academic. And right now the word academic means a very, in the intellectual public yeah, discourse, right. it, it means the enemy. And there's a lot of people that perhaps deserve that targeted uh, vilification, but like a lot that don't, they're just curious people. Yep. They're just no, building, you're absolutely right. building, building robots that will one day destroy you. Voice cracks every time I make a joke. You're not, cause it's just- I a, can't do this. You're not making a joke, it's you're telling <laughs> I, the truth. <laughs> it's, I'm editing. I'm, I, can I delete that joke? Okay, <laughs> it's not even a joke. <laughs> robots, building robots that will one day kill us. Hopefully <laughs> humans, God willing. <laughs> you, God willing, humans are the joke. That's why I'm cracking. My voice is cracking. <laughs> <laughs> what were even, uh, what was I even fucking academics. saying? Academics. Uh, but why? Um, My local, someone had a question. They're an academic. Right. They're an academic. They're saying like, are you worried that, uh, you know, in academia, uh, associating yourself with a sort of uh, somebody who has, who, who can be misconstrued to have radical ideas, like the two examples they gave is Michael Malice and Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> Is, uh, Does Joe have any radical? I wouldn't consider him radical at all. Well, we we can we can talk about it. But Joe I, is, I think, a bad example. He's, well, he's I, quite I, centrist to me. Well, he could have, for example, like what has he, Joe been attacked on? Is for example on the on the topic of like transgender, like uh, and athletes and sports. Athletes yeah. and sports. Uh, there's. What else? I mean, he's been pro Bernie Sanders and that's hardly uh, radical. Pro Trump or like giving not Trump a pass. Yeah, or not, not anti Trump. Not anti Trump. Yeah. Oh, uh, what else? Just but ne none of these are radical. Meat, meat stuff. Being pro meat versus anti vegan. Yeah. Of uh, you know all those kinds of things, but they, you can be misconstrued and and saying. There's, I think, a highlight, and my mom actually wrote to me about this, which is hilarious. Yoshinka. <laughs> Thank you. I, th I like how you jotted it down. That's when it's important. Well, that's, that's the, your mom wrote to you, Yoshinka. That's that's a sign. My voice cracks. A sign when uh, when uh, Michael Malice makes a funny joke is when you jot something down. Yoshinka. <laughs> <laughs> and then he, <laughs> and he, he writes it, and then the next time he just crosses it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just a good point. Yeah. It's like uh, Joe Biden at the debates. Okay. Uh, I did also just crap my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's like a mud slide down here. <laughs> there's a, I mean, he's a comedian. You have a comedian side to you, right? I mean, you're, you've talked about humorous, a lot. Yeah, humor yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. Humorist is. So you can misconstrue like Joe as being somehow a radical thinker. And then the same would be done with you. And his question was, how are you worried about associating yourself with folks like that? Am I or you? Ah, uh, me, me. Yeah, that's uh, a great question. And is that something? Do you see yourself as somebody uh, who's dangerous that I shouldn't be talking to? And in the same way, <laughs> do you uh, do you ever think about guests on your podcast? or people you talk to publicly, associate yourself with publicly, uh, and think that there is somebody that crosses that line yes. that you shouldn't talk so to. So I interviewed, in the new ride, I interviewed like up to full-blown Nazis in That's the last true. chapters about Chris Cantwell, but that was in the context of that book, right? So there's lots of people who people want me to have on my show, and the way I look at it is like you have a table and a tablecloth, right? And let's suppose the table is, of, uh, three feet wide, the tablecloth is two feet wide. So if I move the tablecloth to the right, I'm going to lose people on the left. I can only cover so much space. And the further you go on the fringe in one direction, the more mainstream you're going to lose in the other direction. So I'm very much making a conscious choice not to talk to being 
people call, will say I'm cowardly, and that's absolutely true. I'm, I'm being fearful here. I would prefer not to talk to some of those who would alienate some of the more mainstream people. And here's a perfect example of why. On my birthday last year, I woke up seven o'clock in the morning to go pee. And I checked Twitter, whatever, and Jeb Bush had followed me, Jeb. And I, I, it's 7 a.m., you're not really awake, you're like, wait, what? And then I thought maybe it's a fake account, but it's in the verified tab. Oh, you don't have this because you're not verified on Twitter, that's a shame. Uh, so people who are matter on Twitter. Twitter is, does not respect robots. <laughs> They they ban bots. You're lucky you haven't been banned. Zero, one. Zero, zero. It's zero, zero, zero. Those are my pronouns. <laughs> one. <laughs> so I, it was Jeb, Jeb, Governor Bush, and I corresponded with him and I asked him on the show and he decided not to for various reasons. And very politely, he's like, just politics is so bad right now. I don't want to talk about it. And I respect that for him. If I am in a spit, if I'm creating my show where he's going to get heat for who and get canceled. Oh, you can't be on the show. He has these other guests. I don't want to lose that opportunity because as we were talking about earlier, me and Alex Jones and Tim Pool, I think a lot of people would be very excited to see me sit down with Jeb Bush. And I told him in writing, and I meant this, I wouldn't be clowning him. I wouldn't be disrespectful. It would be a lot of fun. I, there's a goofball side to him that comes out sometimes and I would do my best to bring that out and talk about what it's like being a blue blood, to be born into his grandfather, Prescott Scott, uh, Bush was a senator from Connecticut, uh, he, marrying a woman who didn't speak English. How does that work when your family's royalty and things like that? So I had a lot of fun questions for him and that's kind of, you're gonna have to choose one or the other. Well, you, you do a really good job of that. Like Ben Shapiro does a good job of that too, which is, you can have multiple, you can have a trolley side, a humorous sure. side where you tear down the power structures and so on, but you can also have a serious side and it's a safe space for people from all walks of life to walk in and yes, not I, you're not adversarial. Never, there, I, I take the word guests seriously. If they're gonna be on my show, I'm not going to have them have negative consequences as a result of being on my show. That said, I mean, maybe in my case, I'll be honest and say that I find Alex Jones outside of the conspiracy stuff, for some reason, maybe you can explain, maybe you can psychoanalyze me, but I find him hilarious yeah. to listen to. He's a performer, he's very he's, performative. But there's a lot of people that don't see the humor of it and they see the serious like consequences of spreading conspiracy theories of different kinds. And uh, you mean, yeah. they see the danger of it, you know. And I personally, I'm often tempted to to talk to Alex on, in a podcast format, but I think I'm trying to convince myself that I never will. For me, I feel unsafe talking to Alex because I can't truly be myself, which is like- Yeah, you'd have to be on. Naive and honest. Yeah. And like, and uh, actually I generally, when I talk to humans, I want to see the best in them. And I think that's, like I often think about if I talk to Hitler in 1935, 1938. You got a list of names to give him? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's how you get the interview. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> who, who are we kidding? Um, I would, uh, you have to give away one of your, I would probably give away my brother, so. How many brothers do you have? Well, just one. Okay. Too many. <laughs> what? I want to be an only child. <laughs> he's the older brother. He used to pick on me. Payback. You know, it's only, he had a good life. You, you should think of it more as Stalin. I, I saw I interrupt you because yeah. Hitler, you're Jewish. So you're already going to have very adversarial. It's not going to be a normal, he's not going to perceive you as a as a human in a sense, right? Right. So it's- Stalin, you're right. Yeah, it, that would be much easier. Or Kim Jong-un um, or something like that. Like, do you think, like how, okay, this is a good question. Is, is it? In that, in that spirit, why don't you jot something down? <laughs> uh, if Lex you <laughs> loves Hitler. <laughs> All right, we'll cross it out in a second. Uh, <laughs> uh, prove. 